God had always been part of my story, but um, kind of as my faith progressed and like as I grew older, I kind of took a step back from faith and just kind of started to question things a little bit more, especially like going into college. You know, I didn't go to church regularly. The only reason I went to college is so that I could get a degree so that I could join the Peace Corps. And that was just always something I wanted to do. I really just had a heart for like going and working um, in Africa. I don't know when this was placed on my heart, but it always has been. And then when I graduated from college, um, applied for the Peace Corps, was accepted, um, going through the process of getting placed and everything was going to be great. All the puzzle pieces were coming together. But coinciding with that time, my dad started getting sick and it was ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. So I was just like completely devastated. My mom was still working, my dad was retired, and so I volunteered and I was like, I'm gonna move back home and just full time became the person who stayed home with him and um, helped take care of him and, and make sure that, you know, he was getting everything that he needed during the day. And it's really difficult to see somebody that you've looked up to for your whole life who's been so active and so involved to see him just every day kind of wither away. Um, it was a major trial to my faith, which was kind of weak going into this whole situation. I would go to bed at the end of the night and I would sit in the corner. There was a space in between my bed and the wall of my bedroom. And I would sit in that space, um, just on my knees, just crying out to God, like, stop like just stop and if you're truly the god of the universe heal him and put it all back together because it's falling apart and you're just watching it fall apart it's really hard as a daughter to hear your dad say he's ready to go home um because i didn't want that <laughs> i wasn't okay with just letting him be healed in heaven like i wanted him to be here with us I just remember being so angry and so frustrated and um, and just kind of felt like my faith was kind of shattered at that time. I just felt like a complete sense of betrayal by God. All of those cries for help and all of those cries for healing had kind of, it just seemed like they had fallen on deaf ears. If he truly loved my dad, why would he be allowing this to happen? So it just kind of spiraled into like this bigger and bigger question. I had to get out of Houston and I had to get away kind of from everything that was going on. And so I moved to Dallas. I was running from anybody or anything that would remind me of that time. I think I had walked as far away as I have ever walked in my entire life. It was a much more like intentional, purposeful step to just turn my back on God because I felt like he had turned his back on me. I think there was so many times like wandering in my wilderness when God really did want to reach out and like just show himself to me and I didn't want to turn um, and and look at the face of God and I didn't want to see him and I didn't want to experience that um, for my own anger and I had been unwilling to take that first step for eight years. I think I had spent so much time walking around with anger and frustration and hurt um, I could see it manifesting itself in my everyday life. And so I knew that this was something I was going to have to get to the bottom of. My mom had always whispered in my ear, you know, about coming back to church or finding a good church home or, or doing all of those sorts of things. For some reason, when my mom whispered in my ear this time, it just rang true. It was scary coming back to church. It was scary to kind of reintroduce myself to God, you know, with all the faults and all the hate and all the anger and all the bitterness that I've carried towards you for eight years, here I am. And I knew that so much of it had stemmed from my dad. 
to release all of those fears and disappointment is really difficult. So I started coming to Grief Share to kind of introduce this and give this over to God. Grief Share was a tool, yeah, to work to work through that and or to at least start kind of that process. We were watching the video in the first session and they said, um, you can bury your feelings, but there's gonna be a day of resurrection. And I had spent eight years burying all my feelings, burying all my emotions, burying all of those thoughts and everything, and my day of resurrection was happening. I felt like I was surrounded by people who knew and understood me, um, which hadn't really happened before. And when they still love you through all of that, when they still want to spend time with you, when they still want to invest in you and in your life, that is powerful. <laughs> like That is really, really powerful. Joining community, starting with going to starting point, and then starting point rolled into that ended and we didn't want to stop being friends so we made a small group and then that small group turned into um, discipleship and then discipleship and small group and starting point kind of rolled into we need to get you on a serve team maybe you should try the road This had been such a dream for 14 years, and here it was finally happening. And I wasn't sure if the expectation um, that I had was gonna match up with the reality of this trip. We made it to Zambia, and that first night, I remember we pulled up at Project Samuel, and we step off the bus, and you hear kids singing. Seeing the kids walking into that building, being on Project Samuel, and I was like, this was it, like this was it, this was worth the wait. And it was just kind of a full circle. God took that in something that I just didn't know when it was gonna come to fruition and turned it around and made it into something that everything that I had imagined and I was so worried about the reality not matching up with that, it didn't because it exceeded everything that I thought it was gonna be. Every night, like, we would go out and have worship time together as a team and look at the stars. We were ending the devotion, and then all of a sudden, like, the emotions just got, like, super intense. And I just spoke up, and I was like, guys, like, I just need prayers right now. Like, I thought I kind of had things figured out, like, relationships, like, with your dad and with God maybe I don't have that as figured out as I thought. And like the whole group came around and I'm sitting on the concrete and they're all standing over me, hands on shoulders, hands on head, and they just pray. And it just like felt so good to just know like all these people are surrounding you and they're praying for you and they care about you. And I had just never really had that happen before. I think it's just God working here in our lives when you have people who love you in that way and support you in that way. And I think what I've come to realize now is that God was always there. Like there was not a moment in time when he wasn't sitting in that little space between my wall and my bed, like with me, listening, crying too. He didn't abandon me. He never stopped loving me. Um, he was always there. He never stopped caring about our family and kind of now relating to God through my earthly father. Somehow it just made sense. And it was like the puzzle pieces all kind of fit into place and like the whole story started to make sense. I have a good, good father. Like I know that. I know that I do. And um, I don't, I have two good dads. 